I think three or four street lights that are up right now. But the remaining subdivision is not very well lit. So we pose our, our we're at risk for being, you know, impacted by any type of public safety issues, us running into a cold ourselves because we can't see people, etc. Um, so I just wanted to raise that and I do apologize because I am going to have to leave. I will check on those lights for you. Um, and before you walk out, I'll get your name and number, and you can have mine as well. Um, and then we'll go from there. So that's not Suzanne's question. That's a second one for me. So. <laughs> Glad he's paying attention to that. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions for me? No. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Patrick's the question counter. Uh, <laughs> I would like to say that uh, all of these department heads are going to be here as we move on to uh, our biggest activity of tonight, the neighborhood action session, a uh, portion of neighborhood action sessions. And um, so if you have questions uh, that you would like to ask the chief or more questions for Patrick, or even if you think of a question for uh, Suzanne, uh, feel free to ask those questions. Oh, or the police officers, I'm told by the mayor, you can also ask them uh, some questions. <laughs> They'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, I just want to take a moment to let you know that there are some very important numbers on the back of your agenda. You can take these uh, numbers home with you. They are handy numbers. And if you've called all the numbers that have been given out tonight and for whatever reason, uh, the wires are crossed and they go somewhere else, a department that you don't want or you weren't looking for, you can always call the mayor's office. And that number is 766-7346. I promise you, June will answer the phone. The wires will not be crossed. 766-7346 is the mayor's number. And let's say you call and you don't get an answer, you can always email the mayor too at cityofflint.com, that's our website, but you can email the mayor at mayor at cityofflint.com. So if you can't remember anything else, just remember those three things, and if all of that fails, you can drive down to 1101 South Saginaw Street, where City Hall is. The mayor has uh, open office hours every Wednesday from 10 until noon. That's every Wednesday from 10 until noon. You don't have to make an appointment. You just have to be uh, one of the lucky 13, is it? Oh, we're about 10. Oh, so one of the lucky 10. So that means you may want to get there a little after 9 and sign up. This gentleman says get there the day before. So you may want to come Tuesday night, 5 o'clock, sleep over, and be there when the doors open at 8. But uh, the mayor holds open office every Wednesday from 10 until noon. and. Um, and he loves to talk to all of you. That, I think that's one of his uh, favorite parts of the week when you guys come and visit. So now that I've taken care of those little housekeeping measures, it's time now to talk about neighborhood action and exactly what it is. Now, you have heard from all of us and we've told you uh, about us. Now it's time for us to hear from you during our neighborhood action portion. And your feedback, we want you to understand, is extremely important to us. You know exactly what you want and what you need right here in the Ninth Ward in your community. So this is your opportunity to share and to suggest. And your information that you give us will be used to help the city allocate resources in our city budget. How many of you know that resources are very short? Yes, resources are short, they're short everywhere. At City Hall, at Dawn's house, they're just short. Resources are short. So what better way than to, you know, help guide those very limited resources, uh, maybe to help meet some of the needs that you have. And that's what your feedback tonight will uh, help this administration do. It would also help us determine what type of grant opportunities we should pursue. DCED, that is uh, the department that Suzanne is from, We'll also use your feedback in the consolidated plan that she mentioned earlier that is a requirement for our community to receive federal entitlement dollars to help stretch those resources. Many community partners are also waiting to see what you identify so that they can plan their work and also develop ways to help support your ideas. 
So that's why it's so important that you all engage in conversation and, and write down and help us understand what you need. So we're gonna do this in two particular activities. The two activities, um, before we get to that, I just wanna lay out a few rules. There are always rules to everything and just help us move this process along. We want you to keep your comments short and sweet, but meaningful, just short and sweet because time is short. And we want you to put your listening ears on and be willing to listen to others in the group without interrupting. It may be difficult, but try, try to listen. We want you to write legibly. That's why I can't participate in this part, because I'm having a hard time with that legible writing thing, but write legibly. We need to be able to read what you've written. How else are we going to do all the things we talked about earlier about allocating resources if we can't read what you wrote? So please write legibly. And let your discussion guide know if you need help, and she or he will arrange for some assistance. We have discussion guides and facilitators, and at this moment I would like for them to raise their hands. These are the individuals that are gonna help guide this portion of our neighborhood action session. And they have all of the information you need to fill out in the packets. And the first activity is gonna be the ward assets and opportunities. And this is where we identify assets and opportunities in each ward. And I'll tell you exactly how we do that. You need to start to begin thinking about some of the people, some of the places, some of the programs, such as Insight, this building we're in, or things that make you proud and things that make this community better. These are the things we're defining as assets in your community. For example, Insight provides services for those in need in our community. And you all may consider that as an asset. We also want you to think about some of the things that have the potential to become an asset with a little improvement. These are the things that we are identifying as opportunities. For example, the lot at the corner of ABC Boulevard and the Highway to Heaven is overgrown with weeds. And I think someone mentioned weeds here earlier. And it's littered with trash, but it also happens to be a great location for a park. Now this could be considered an opportunity. So if, if someone cleaned that lot up, then maybe it can realize its potential and become a park, which will then make it an asset and add value to the Ninth Ward. We want you to brainstorm as a group all of the assets and opportunities in your ward. Just start thinking about some of those things now. Then you'll have a chance to fill out the assets and opportunity sheet on your own because every individual's input matters. So as you have these discussions, and you may not want to put down what your neighbor puts down, you may want to put down your own thing uh, after the discussion. Everyone has their own sheet and their own opportunity to list their uh, particular assets and opportunities. So start thinking about where you live and think about what it could be. So don't think about it as what it is now, but think about what it could be in the future. Our second activity tonight is the citywide strategic priorities. And this is when you tell us about your priorities and what the priorities for the city as a whole should be. You will help City Hall determine where to focus changes and improvements because we want to allocate the resources